Hi friends, this is Caitlin. Welcome back to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. Today we are going to be jumping in with the Avery and Elle Dynamite Day Stamps and Dies. These are absolutely adorable. They're perfect for birthdays, but definitely could be used for other types of celebration too. And oh, they're just so stinking cute. So I'm going to start out by stamping them in my Misty. And I am using um, an alcohol-friendly paper cardstock and I'm using up some scraps so <laughs> the nice thing about these images is most of them are pretty small and so this was the perfect opportunity for me to sort through my cardstock scraps and just kind of patchwork together all of my images because I knew I was going to be die cutting them anyway and we're going to be making a really fun kids birthday card this definitely could be matured up a little bit but I really wanted to play into the super cute and cartoony kind of feel of these dinos. So what better way than a kid birthday card? I'm using the Honey Bee Stamps Be Creative Intense Black Ink for this project. And I especially love it because even if I stamp multiple times, which I usually do need to do on the first time I'm using a stamp set like this, um, the ink dries super quickly. So I don't have to worry about my Copic markers smudging or anything like that. So definitely something to keep in mind if you also love to Copic color, this is absolutely a great ink pad for that. And I am just kind of working on these little pieces, one section at a time, just fitting as many of these little accessories into each little, you know, corner as I can. So I definitely did a couple copies of the trees and the rocks. I only did one volcano. Um, I kind of wanted to keep my expectations in check for how many of these adorable images I could fit on the card at once for my scene because I did also know that I was going to be adding a large sentiment to the bottom of my card front and so the real estate was going to have to be split up a little bit. So I just couldn't help myself. I'm so in love with this little triceratops coming out of the egg. So I added him to the inside of my card using um, the new Distress Oxide ink in Lost Shadow. And I love how subtle this is, but still gives that extra little detail inside for the recipient as a little surprise when you go to put your um, personalized message in there. So I just thought it was too cute to not play with. And then I'm going to jump into my Copic coloring. I definitely tried to limit myself on my color palette this time. So I'm only using one combination for browns, greens, reds, yellow, and blue. Um, just because there's going to be so much going on, I really thought that a limited palette would help me to tie everything together and really help me from personally getting overwhelmed when looking at the scene. So I shaded in the bottom rocky part of my volcano in those um, E markers. I'm using the same ones to shade in the trunks of my palm trees and I will use the lighter two to shade in my rocks just leaving out that darkest E59 for those. So they have a little variation, but they're still all in that same color family. So then I went in and did all of my leafy foliage. I did all the trees and these little bushes all together, going in with some YG markers. Um, you'll see in a little bit, I am going to be pulling in some of the Lawn Fawn pattern paper. And so those were the colors that I matched my markers to the best that I could when I was picking out exactly which green, red, blue, and yellow I was going to use. But I just love how this kind of, I mean, I know green is not primary color, but how these more primary and bold colors look all together. And it really helps to give that fun and youthful vibe to this whole scene. I'm, oh, it's so stinking cute. So for this T-Rex, I'm assuming if I'm wrong and you know what it is, feel free to leave it in the comments below, but don't judge me, okay? Because my dinosaur knowledge is limited. So on this little T-Rex-ish looking dinosaur, I decided to make him red and then I'll be using all of the other colors for his kind of accessories. And I thought that it would be really sweet to have um, his belly and his back spikes be yellow. So I'm just going in with the two, usually two of the main colors 
to shade in these smaller areas because on a, such a small space, adding in a three color blend is just going to be a headache. Um, so don't stress yourself out about it if that's not speaking for you. So I made the cheek, the cake chocolate so that the brown could match in with the browns that I had already used, gave the hat a blue tone, the cake a little green frosting. And then for this little present, I had a feeling that this was going to be close to this dinosaur and it ended up being right next to him. So it worked out perfectly. But because of that, I uh, went with blue for the wrapping with a little yellow bow. Then for this long neck dinosaur, stegosaurus, I don't know, this really, really cute long dinosaur, I decided to shade him in with those blues. And this was really fun because he definitely has a lot more space and kind of room to shade and color. And I did my best to leave the uh, darkest colors out of the circles, their spots on them so that I could go in with my other markers to fill them in, especially with this one. I'm pretty sure he ends up getting green polka dots. Um, so yeah, just really fun. I knew that I was going to have three main dinosaurs and I knew I wanted my main colors to be the blue, uh, yellow and red again, kind of pulling those primary colors to the front and letting the green be more of a support color. So I just knew from the get go that one dinosaur was going to be mostly red, one mostly blue, and then the last one with the uh, banner, mostly yellow. This color scheme is definitely not something that I normally gravitate towards, but I just thought it was so impactful and fun and it really fit these characters so well. So for this little yellow dino, I ended up giving him a blue belly and colored in his little banner blue as well. I did forget to color in his back arm, but I will go back in later and fill that in. And then just for balance, I ended up giving him a green party hat with some little uh, white gel pen dots just to break up the color and add a little bit of extra detail. Then I used the coordinating dies to get everything lined up and I taped those in place using the Spellbinders yellow tape. I absolutely love this stuff. It's the perfect balance for me of being able to hold my dies where I need them, but not damage or tear my paper when I go to pull them off after I've run them through my die cutting machine. And I don't know about you, but that is not as easy to find in a product as I thought it would be when I started card making. Once I had all of my images cut out, it was time to start on my card base. I'm going in with the watercolor wishes and all the dots pattern papers from Lawn Fawn. I cut one main piece for my sky. I cut two layers of this green and then ran one of them through my die cutting machine with the grassy border dies. And then I grabbed the Avery L Everyday Alphas die set and I used the all the dots paper to cut out my little extra sentiment that we're going to be playing with um, and incorporating with our stamp set today. I am going in first with my main sky background and I love the really light wash and just like very soft texture that this watercolor paper has. Then I attached the larger green rectangular piece on flat using my Tombow dot adhesive runner. And then for the one with the grassy border cut into it, I'm going to be using the scrapbook adhesives thin foam squares. You could also definitely use like a roll of foam tape, but I just love these. They're so easy and I just keep them right next to my desk so I have them on hand at all times. I found that two rows of five worked well for this just to get a nice even support across my panel. Once I had that flat and in place, it was time to stamp the stamped part of our sentiment. So I'm going to do a little bit of stamp surgery here. Please forgive me and don't panic. I do this often, actually. If you take a nice sharp pair of scissors and just kind of hold your stamp nice and taut, you can cut them apart. And then when you go to use them, if you want the full sentiment back again, you can just line them up right in a row as if they were still one piece. I promise that it's a little scary the first time you do it, but for me, it's easier than trying to mask out the word. For you, that might not be the case. So do whatever makes you happy, but I just want you to know that this is something that's possible. Our sentiment is going to read, hope your day is dino-mite. 
Uh, so the Hope Your Day is from the stamp set says Rexcellent, and I just really wanted to play up the dynamite part of this stamp set. I cut all of those little alphas from those four different colors of the All the Dots Lawn Fawn paper. And like I said, this pattern paper is what helped me pick out my color scheme, the exact Copic markers I was going to use on my dinos, because it just helps to tie everything in together. I'm just going in with some Lawn Fawn liquid glue and adhering these little alphas into place. I kind of put them tilted and a little wonky. I feel like the the whole card is so fun and whimsical that having the everything be a little offset makes sense, but also it took all of the stress out from me having to worry about getting everything nice and lined up straight. If you are worried about that, just really lean into it and let everything be a little crazy on purpose and then no one will ever know that you were worried about it to begin with. I added on that little exclamation point and then got to work adhering all of my stamped images into place. I started with the stuff in the way background. That's going to be our volcano and one of the little palm trees. And then I knew that I wanted to put something on that front section as well. So I'm going to put the other tree back into place and then I'm going to add one of the little rock formations down to this bottom corner, just helping to pull that sentiment further into the scene. And then I started to feel a little bit overwhelmed. And so uh, you'll see I start just kind of laying things in place without gluing them down or committing yet. Just wanting to see where all of my dinos were going to lay to make sure that any of the other background pieces that I added weren't going to be completely covered up and lost. That rock formation could not go behind that little dino as much as I liked it there. Because if you have kids, you know, they're going to think that it's something that's not appropriate to have on a birthday card. So the rock ended up going in front of the dinosaur and not behind his little booty. And it ended up being perfect because that rock became the table that is going to hold the birthday present. And then I will be able to layer that red dino right on top of them, creating a cute little cluster over there on the side. And I don't know, it just made sense that this little dino is the one kind of hosting the party. So maybe the blue dinosaur, it's that one's birthday, right? And then the yellow one is holding the banner, helping to celebrate their friend. I don't know about you, but sometimes having these little stories helps me when I am scene building. Uh, because I used the foam tape on my grassy layer, I am adhering the bottom half of my red dino to with uh, the liquid glue and then adding a foam square up behind his head to help just make sure that he sits nice and flat across all of the different layers of the card. Then I'm gonna tuck the blue birthday boy dino back behind the grass. Again, just playing up the texture and kind of the added dimension that this second layer gives to the whole scene. I just thought he was so cute and I love that the liquid glue kind of gives you a minute to play and adjust and shift. And then I wanted this yellow dinosaur also behind the grass, but it just felt like too much back there all at once. So what I ended up doing was making sure that his tail stuck through the blades of grass and so it was kind of like he's in the middle. He's halfway, right? So we have one fully in front, one fully behind, and one in the middle to balance everything out. So that is my card all complete. I just love how sweet this is. I hope it makes you smile and gets you inspired for a dynamite day yourself and our little egg dino sitting there in the back. So make sure that you're subscribed to the Scrapbook Pal channel so that you never miss out on any amazing uploads and inspiration to come. And make sure you're also following over on Instagram because they're posting some super fun pictures and reels over there. Just stuff to help make you smile and get inspired through your day. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope that you have an absolutely amazing week and as always, happy crafting.